quadratics, page 5. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the discriminant. The discriminant is a shortcut um, to find out uh, what the parabola looks like um, or what the solutions to the quadratic are without finding the complete solution. Because just by looking at the discriminant, you can figure out things like, hey, does the parabola cross the x-axis or not? Does the, does the quadratic have two different solutions, or does it have one solution, or does it have no solutions, no real solutions? So um, it's sometimes if you're not interested in the exact solution, but you just want to know if there are solutions, you can just use the discriminant. And the reason why that uh, the discriminant is um, is available as a shortcut is because if, when you look at the quadratic equation, you can see that um, it has this part inside the square root, b squared minus 4ac. And we know that whatever goes inside the square root to be a real solution, we need to have it be positive. Positive numbers have square roots that are real and negative numbers don't have real solutions and um, you probably talked about imaginary numbers before but when you have a negative number inside the square root then you end up with an imaginary number so we're mostly interested in the real numbers here and so when we get a, a solution or a b squared minus 4ac positive then we know that there's two real solutions what if it's exactly zero. Well, then you can see that the square root part is zero, and then what you're left with is negative b over 2a, and that is going to be the only solution, because it's going to be negative b over 2a plus or minus zero. Well, zero uh, can be discounted, and then you're left with just minus b over 2a. You only have one solution. So when the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, is exactly zero, then you only have one solution. When it's positive, then you have two real solutions. And when it's negative, you have no real solutions. And so we represent the quantity b squared minus 4ac, which is the part that's inside the square root, with the triangle delta. OK, and this is just explaining what I just said. Um, so let's look at uh, c here, which is x squared plus, b, x, squared plus x plus 5 equals 0. And just by finding the discriminant, we're going to figure out how many real solutions there are. Now, remember that uh, the, we've put it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And in this case, um, a would be 1, b would be 1, right? Because there's, a, there's an invisible 1 here. There's an invisible 1 there, right? And, uh, and c would be 5. Actually, we don't care what a is because... Uh, the discriminant doesn't depend on A. It only depends on B and... Oh, I'm sorry. That's not true. It depends on A also. It, it depends on all three numbers. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. So that gives us 1 minus 20. And that's negative 19. For just the fact that we know it's negative, we already know that... Um, C, or is it E? I'm sorry, it's E. E has uh, no real solutions because the discriminant was less than zero. Okay? We didn't even need to figure out that it was exactly negative 19. Just the fact that it is negative, we know that there's no real solutions. What does that look like with a parabola? Well, when there's no real solutions and we graph it, it means that there's no x-intercept. So like a parabola that looks like this, where it's kind of floating over the x-intercept, that's what it looks like when there's no real solutions or the discriminant is negative. Okay. Now we'll go down here to D, 4D. For each of the following quadratic equations, find the discriminant delta and hence draw its sine diagram. Find all values of k for which the equation has um, 
two distinct real roots, two real roots, a repeated root, or no real roots. Okay, and uh, the thing that makes this a little bit difficult is they didn't give us real numbers, they gave us um, variables. So we're going to do D, and we wrote D out here, and uh, we can see that we don't have a number for B, we have a variable K minus 2. A is 2, B is K minus 2, and C is 2. So they want to know when uh, this quadratic equation has two real roots, or one real root, or no real roots. So to figure that out, we can use the discriminant. Except this one's a little bit different because instead of having a number, we have a variable. So it's like we sometimes, depending on the value of k, depending on the value of k, we're going to uh, have two real roots, or one real root, or zero real roots. Two, two. Okay, do you see where I got ac? Okay, so now we expand k squared minus, and we have to expand because. Oops. K plus 4. Because we're going to set everything equal. This is, uh, we're going to figure out when it's 0 when it's not 0. This will be minus 4 times, 4 times 2 times 2 is 16. So that would be equal to K squared minus 4K minus 12. Okay. So when is this equal to 0 is the first question. Okay, if we figure out when it's zero, it's easier to figure out when it's positive or negative, which is our question in the end is, is delta positive, is delta negative, or is delta zero? And since it depends on k, it's like, what values of k makes delta positive? What values of k make delta negative? What de values of k make delta zero? So first we're going to figure out what values of k make delta zero. Well. This is a quadratic equation, and we are going to figure out what the roots are. I think this is one, oops, this is one where we can figure out uh, using factoring. So you can see that 12 factors into 1, 3, 4, 2, 6, or 12. Um, there's a 4 here, so probably it's going to be k minus 2k minus 6, something like that, because 2 times 6 is 12. And 2k and 6k, you can see how if you take the difference of those, you're going to get 4k. So it's probably going to be 2 and 6. Uh, one's going to be negative, one's going to be positive. Let's make this one positive and this one negative. Negative, multiplying these two together, you get negative 12. That's right. Multiplying 2 times k, you get 2k. Multiplying minus 6 times k, you get negative 6k. You add those together, negative 4k. So that worked. Okay. Um, and that's equal to 0. So we know that the 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 two solutions for for the discriminant equals zero are k plus two equals zero and k minus six equals zero subtract two from both sides you get k equals negative two add six to both sides you get k equals six so the two solutions are k equals negative two k equals six when k equals negative two and k equals six we know that the discriminant is equal to zero um, it tells us to make a sine diagram. Sine diagrams are basically just number lines. And we're going to put uh, the two critical points there, which are negative 2 and 6. And so we know at these two points, it's the, the, the sine is 0. Um, so when is, um, when is this discriminant equal to a positive number? When is it equal to a negative number? Well, um, the way we do that is, well, since we know that these are the only two points at zero, in between here and here, it's going to be either all negative or all positive. And from down, this region here is going to be all negative or all positive, and here it's going to be all negative or not all positive. Um, we know that there are no more zeros because we've already found all the zeros. Negative 2 and 6 are the only zeros. So in between and on the left and right side, we know there are no more zeros. It's going to be all positive, all negative in each interval. So uh, let's test each interval. So the way we can do that is we just take easy numbers to test. For example, right here, there's a nice easy number to test, which is 0. If we put k equals 0, what does this turn out to be? Well, we can either put it in here, in this equation, or we could put it in the factored form, either one. 
uh, let's do here. So we'll put zero there, we'll put zero there, the first ter terms become zero, and what you're left with is negative 12. So we know that at zero, the interval is negative 12, so we know that the whole interval is negative, so we'll put negative here, okay? Negative, this part is negative. Now, uh, since it's a parabola, if you know that this part is negative, you already know that these two are positive. But just to check to make sure, we'll take like a really big number, like take like uh, a million, okay? And we'll take a million and we'll put it in this equation here, or this equation here. But uh, let, let's put it in this one here. If you put a million in here for k, you'd have a million and two times um, 999,000 something. You'd have two real big positive numbers, right? Because the negative six doesn't really matter because the million is so big, right? So, um, oops. So we know that for positive a million for k, then we know that the discriminant is equal to something positive. So we just confirm that. What if we put a huge negative number in here? If you put a huge negative number here, a huge negative number here, it doesn't matter that there's a plus two and a minus six here. In the end, it's going to be a big negative number times a big negative number, which is just a big positive number. So we know that below negative 2, it's also positive. So our sign diagram says in between negative 2 and 6, it's negative. Below negative 2, it's positive. Above 6, it is positive. So uh, when do we have two distinct real roots? Well, if k is greater than 6 or k is less than negative 2, then we have two real roots. Okay? And... Um, if k is between 6 and negative 2, then we have uh, no real roots. And what if we have k equal to negative 2 or k equal to 6? Then we know that we have exactly one real root. The discriminant is 0, which means we have one real root.